We are live. So, hello, Facebook. This is Donna with Breathe Life Ministries and Christy Crenshaw with Kingdom Health Builders. Hello. And we are going to be talking about a brand new challenge coming from Kingdom Health Builders uh, designed to improve your health, improve your fitness, and what else? And while you discuss that, I'm going to just make sure that we've got all the details in here that we need. All right. So thank you, Donna, for having me on and for um, giving me the opportunity to share this with all of your uh, viewers and your members. Um, I believe the Lord has laid this on my heart. Um, and again, it is called the Healthy Temple Challenge, because we know that as Christians, that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that we want this body that we live in to be healthy. So the main aspects of this challenge are going to be to rid us of any excess weight that's holding us back, that's causing health conditions. And in that you will improve your health and um, you will also learn spiritual truths that um, are some things that could be triggers, some things that are holding you back. So um, we're not only gonna identify these, but going through um, the course of the challenge, uh, there will be scriptures, there will be prayers and affirmations and things that will actually help to release you oh, from amen. these bondages amen. and from these strongholds that, that are holding so many of God's precious daughters in bondage. Oh, that is, that is awesome. That is awesome. Let's, um, okay, I'm just typing in the link to the challenge right now in the comments so that people can check that out. It is in there now. And that would be Pink and Zeppelin trying to destroy a squirrel. <laughs> Even as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just ignore them. Uh, hope, hopefully they will calm down here. And I'm also gonna just watch and make sure that if we've got comments, we can read them and okay so everything is live everything's working good yay and let me just and let, now i just need yay. to okay we got the link up we're able to um follow any and track with any comments so now uh we're good to go so we've got the health challenge right. we when does this begin uh, this will begin um, next Monday. Next so, Monday. Uh, yes, that is the 28th. Awesome. So that, that's the day that we will actually go live with the challenge. So, um, and with that, like I said, uh, week one is going to be pretty intensive. There are lessons every day. Okay. Um, you know, it will be delivered through um, a web app. Oh, nice. So, it's videos that I'm working on right now. I'm actually recording all of this content and okay. uh, uploading these into the app. So you'll be able to do that at your own pace. Okay. Uh, like I said, there are things that, that will come out. It'll be drip fed daily. Okay. But, um, and then with that, there will be um, accountability call at okay. the end of the week. Beautiful. So, so I'm um, going to be polling everybody who joins. Okay. Uh, just to find out, you know, what days and times will work for everybody All right. um, or what will work for the majority of people. So, um, and again, we'll do that probably on a Zoom call. Okay. And then, um, because I really want to be sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. um, because we need accountability. Right. Yes. You know, you can... And I know myself, I can join a lot of different things, but if nobody's ever going to hold me accountable, mm -hmm. I may or I may not finish that thing. I may or I may not do the things that I had set out to do. Right. So that's where we need accountability. And it's not going to be just accountability with me, mm -hmm. but this is going to be a community oh, and you, yes. we're going to be accountable to each other. That's so, cool. and I'm giving you guys um, the guarantee that I'm going through this with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going through it with you. I'm mm -hmm. going to be doing the same things that you're doing. 
And not only am I going to be holding you accountable, but you guys are going to be holding me accountable too. Did I do what I say I said I was going to do? You know, awesome. because we all need to be accountable. And, and uh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. So it begins next Monday and it goes again for how long? Six weeks. Six weeks. This is good. Yeah, it's a six week challenge. And then at the end of the challenge, there will be the opportunity to um, continue with monthly support. Um, it'll be a monthly membership for those that want to continue with okay. this, you know, where we will have um, either weekly or bi-weekly sessions, you know, that'll come again with some ongoing lessons um, and just with calls, you know, so that people can say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Um, right. or still, you know, successes, you know, because not everybody's going to be exactly where they want to be at the end of six weeks. Yes. You know, unless you only have like 15, 20 pounds to lose, then, you know, it's going to be a little bit longer of a process than that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And then just, you know, having that ongoing, you know, continual support just helps keep you on track, helps keep it at the forefront of your memory or your mind so that you're not falling back into old habits, into old patterns, you know, and staying um, covered almost under a ministry. Yes. yes. And, that's, and that's truly what I believe the Lord is telling me mm -hmm. that this is going to be that Kingdom Health Builders is not just a business, but it's also going to function kind of as a ministry and it's going to be a covering for people. Yes. I tell a you that. covering. You hit, uh, you hit a really strong point right there that having, having the support of a community around you it, and we, you know, we recognize, we recognize the value of that when you're going through addiction recovery, mm -hmm. we don't really recognize the value of that or even the need of it when it comes to our health and nutrition, do we? That's right. Yes, yes. Um, what is the difference that it has made for you personally when it comes to actually being surrounded in a community? Um, well, I mean, once again, when you have community, mm -hmm. again, you have someone that you're accountable to. Right. Because even myself as a health coach, mm -hmm. you know, I could fall off the wagon. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get busy with things, you know, and over this last six months or so, you know, I've been so busy building my business that I've kind of noticed like, hey, my clothes are getting a little tight again, you know because I've not really paid as much attention to some of my own needs that I needed. So again, with a community, you know, not only am I going to be coaching you guys, not only am I going to be leading you guys, but I have to lead by example. Right. Because number one, I can't be a hypocrite. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not going to lead and teach others to do things that I'm not doing myself and yeah. being able to constantly have those people that I'm leading, those people that I'm teaching, those people that I'm guiding, keeps it fresh in my memory. Yes. As well. Keeps it at the forefront of my eyes as well. So, yeah. and again, just that community of everybody coming together, it, there, it builds strength. Yes. There's strength in numbers. You know, you're not alone. And you know that if you struggle with something, if you're just having a bad day, there's right. other people that's doing this as well that you can reach out to. There is going to be a support community, you know, um, with this web app that I'm building, there is a community feature in there. Okay. So there's going to be different sections and categories. And one of those sections may be just help. I'm struggling today. Yes. Where people can go in there and they can say, Hey, I am struggling today. And then all of the members of the community are going to be able to see that somebody's posted a new comment in there. And then we can all go help and support that person who's struggling, you know, because, you know, and I'm not going to say that there might not be a day that I'm the person in there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's it's like, right. It's like, oh, there's so much going on. It's like, I'm struggling today. You all pray for me. So, 
that I mean, that is so so true i mean you know i think this kind of goes to the common misconceptions about christianity mm-hmm. about what it means to be in ministry what it means mm-hmm. to i mean if you're a follower of jesus christ you're in ministry whether you realize it or not you're mm-hmm. in ministry and exactly. um let's talk let's talk about that a little bit how um as it relates to this that we have some common misconceptions mm-hmm. um and what are some of those misconceptions that you have come up against as it pertains to what you do with kingdom health builders um, well, there's just that perception that in order to do or teach anything, you have to be perfect at it yourself. Good one. That you can't have any areas where you've fallen. You can't have any times when you've messed up. It's just like, you know, if I listen to the world or to Satan, I wouldn't stand up here and tell people, hey, guess what? I've gained 20 pounds over the last six months and I've got to get it off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But because I know that number one, I'm human. Right. Number two, there is the grace of God. That's right. And number three, I know how to do what I need to do to get it back off. That's right. So I'm not going to get into shame. No, nope. I'm not going to get into condemnation. That's right. And, and the other thing that also happens with that is it lets everyone else see, hey, I'm human. Right. I mess up. I make mistakes, but I know how to get up. That's get right. Back on track. What is it? And if I know how to get up and get back on track, then I'm going to know how to teach you how to get up and get back on track. That's right. I mean, what is it? That there's a proverb that proverb that says, um, "A righteous man may fall seven times, but gets mm-hmm. up eight. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's and that's what this walk is all about. It's not about. I mean, we will never attain perfection on this side of heaven. Right. We strive for it. We attain. For that, I mean, we're to continually be, you know, and not trying to be perfect, but that we're maturing more and more and more as we go from glory to glory to glory. But we know that God loves us too much to leave us where we're at. That's right. He loves us like we are, but he loves us too much to leave us there. So we have to keep, you know, leveling up. And, you know, it's what they always say with new levels come new devils you know there's that effect you know every time that you attain a new level then there's a different level of um battle that comes to that and that's one thing that i can say like six months ago when Mm -hmm. i said yes to this as a full-time call from Mm -hmm. the lord i leveled up right and when i leveled up there was a new level of spiritual authority there that i had to then come against and i had to battle very good. And, and the one thing that the enemy will try to do is he's going to try to discredit and disqualify you. That's a fact. And he will always attack you in the area of your gifting and calling. Wow. Wow. So, you know, I've had some different struggles that have come on me in the last six months that I didn't struggle with before because mm-hmm. I've leveled up. Right. Well, and here's the deal, too, is that a lot of pe- people love to teach you how to succeed mm-hmm. but they don't so much like to teach you how to pick yourself up after you failed or after you stumbled and and what i'm hearing from you in is in your authenticity and your grit you're able to say okay so i i went backwards a little bit from where i wanted to be now mm-hmm. I'm, but I'm not going to let that define me. I'm not going to let that hold me back. I'm not no. going to let that stop me from moving forward. No. And, and from that point, go ahead. yeah, from that point, what you do is you reevaluate and recalculate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm having to take a look at things. I'm having to make some um, decisions and some, some choices. Mm-hmm. you know, um, yes. of some things that's going to have to be done differently. Right. You know, because um, the job that I had before, I was extremely active. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it was no joke for me. I walked like seven hours, not seven hours, but seven miles per day in wow. this job. Oh gosh. So, and that- you know, and I've stepped back, you know, into full-time um, health coaching and kind of ministry stuff. So I'm not as active just in my day to day. So with that being said, I'm having to, to readjust some things. Yes. Either readjust what I'm eating, readjust my exercise, or kind of do both and meet in the middle. Yes. So, and those are the things that we have to do, you know, in our day-to-day life because things aren't always going to stay the same. It's so true. It's so true. And I think that's one of the more, uh, more powerful things that in my conversations with you, Christy, that I've... Um, that I've come across and it, it, it's the whole picture. It's like, this is a lifestyle and Mm -hmm. in any lifestyle, there's changes and transitions that take place where what worked, um, maybe in this season, Mm -hmm. you have to do what you said, readjust and recalculate for the new season you're in, you're no yeah. longer in a place where you're walking seven miles a day. Yes. So now I have to adjust mm-hmm. to the activity level that I'm at today. Exactly. Um, and these are just that. So it, it's, it's to teach a person, not just how to, you know, take off weight, take off weight, take off weight, and then keep it there for the rest of your life. It's to understand the rises and falls, Mm -hmm. the waves that come through in life and be able to ride those into a consistent level of health. Yes. You know, because at the end of the day, it's really not about that number on the scale or even the size clothing that we are. Uh Um, You know, one of the things that I like to say all the time, it's not about pride. It's not about vanity. Mm-hmm. It's about honoring this body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And doing everything that we can possibly do to make sure that this body is healthy. Yes. And that we are able to go forward and fulfill the call of God on our life. That is because that is the, so good. You know, the enemy is taking out way too many Christians by poor choices. He doesn't have to kill us because he makes us make the choices that kill ourselves. Wow. Day Say that today, again. Today. Say he that again. Yeah. He doesn't necessarily have to kill us because he's causing us to make choices that we are killing ourselves. You know, somebody shared um, a post in my Facebook group um, a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and it was giving the analogy of ants. You know, and, and right now I have ants in my kitchen because of all the rain that we've had here. So, um, and I told my husband, I'm like, you need to go to the store today and buy some of the bait, the poison. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of the analogy that was given. You can either run around and you can squish all the ants and kill them, or you can put out this bait that they willingly eat and take back to the, the colony that kills them all. Oh, wow. Satan's doing the same thing with us. He doesn't have to put his finger on us and kill us. He's put the bait there. The bait is all of this unhealthy food or things that we call food. Half of this stuff is not even food. You know, most of it doesn't have any real natural ingredients in it. Um, You know, you know, you flip over the ingredients and read and it's, it's all chemicals. There is not one natural thing in that, that the Lord made and intended for us to eat. Flavored, it's flavored, sweetened cardboard. Exactly. You know, and that's not what the Lord gave us to feed and nourish this body. That's right. And we have to get back to that. And then for those people who are, who have damaged some of the, some of the body um, and people are in different levels of damage and, you know, metabolic syndrome and all of that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. has come from that. So then you have to understand the process of reversing and healing that. There you go. And there, there is a process of that. Yes. And, um, and that's part of what I teach in this group mm-hmm. or in this, in this challenge is part of what's going to be taught is how do you fix the damage that's been done? Oh, that is so good. Because how many people feel totally 
defeated and just give up because they don't yeah. believe it's reversible. Um, That's right. And it is, it is so reversible. Oh. <laughs> and, and you would be surprised at how quickly your body can make the changes. I mean, our body is so fearfully and wonderfully made mm. that when you, you provide it with everything it has need of, this body will regenerate itself. It's true. You know, it's true. You know, there is no, there is no herb that cures. There is no food itself that cures. The body heals. The body cures. Right. And, but you have to give it what it needs. You know, if we're not giving our body what it needs, it's not going to be able to do that. Right. It's only going to continue and further to deteriorate. That's right. And, you know, and like I said, that's the scary part of this is, yes. you know, um, that I, and I talk about the job that I left uh -huh. the Lord put me there in that job specifically to see what happens because I was working in dialysis. Oh, wow. Which is an end of, which is an end of life yep. situation, but nine times out of 10, they are there because of their choices. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Type one diabetes yeah, type two diabetes is the number one thing that sends people to dialysis. Yes. And the number two thing is high blood pressure. Oh, my. And both goodness. of those are controllable with diet most of the time. Now, some people will have genetic conditions and variables, you know, from time to time that you know, their blood pressure runs out of control. Nobody knows yeah. why. Yeah. You know, things like that. So, again, in this, there is no condemnation in right. any of this. Because, again, the enemy has lulled us into a state of ignorance. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of a lot of ignorance. You just people just don't know. They don't. And that's one of the verses that that the Lord really drives me with is my people perish for lack oh. of knowledge. They are dying because they don't know. There's nobody to tell them this stuff. Right. Well, and, you know, here's another thing that I've learned um, both in talking with you and also just um, from a, a Bible study that uh, my church um, just went through with Kenneth Hagin's The Believer's Authority. And that is that we can overcome. We've been given everything we need to overcome these seemingly hopeless situations. Yes. How have you seen that play out in your ministry with health? Yeah. And honestly, that goes right along with the book that I'm reading right now, The Law of Recognition. Okay. Where it talks about, you know, Mike Murdoch wrote this one. And he talks about everything that you have need of is already in your life. Wow. And, and part of that is just recognizing what he has already given us. And for our health, you know, yes, you might need a mentor. Yes, you might need somebody that's going to, to raise up as a deliverer. But mm -hmm. other than that, he's already given you everything that you need. Yes. We have healthy food that he's given yes. us. We have the ability to sleep. We have the ability to exercise. We have the ability to drink clean, fresh water. Yes. These four things just those four alone, if we take them seriously yes, and get the other junk out of there is enough to start that process. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, I, I, I tell you, um, I felt, uh, you know, just in my own experience, I felt helpless until... Mm -hmm. I began to understand the truth. Yes. It's, it's a deception and a lie of the enemy to say you're helpless over this situation. Yes. Because in Christ, as you were just saying, we have everything we need. Everything. Exactly. Um, what are... What are some of the tools that you're going to be providing through this challenge? You talk about the app. Mm -hmm. 
Um, can you share with us a little bit about what's going to be available on that app? You've got the community. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like I said, with the app, there is going to be um, the daily content lessons. Okay. So you will have access to those videos. Uh -huh. um, there will be um, a download. Okay. Uh, that can, you can actually take these things. You can download them and uh, print it out if you need to. Um, there will actually be daily exercises as well. Okay. So there will be, um, and each day is going to be a little different. You know, one day it may just say, do go walk for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. but the next day may be um, an exercise routine called a full body blast. Okay. And it's body weight exercises that's meant to tone and build strength. Nice. No, so, you know, along with this journey of getting healthy, we want to build strength. We want to build endurance. Yes. And, um, and then I'm also kicking around the idea of putting some stretching videos in there as well, because that's another thing that we don't do enough of. We don't stretch. And, um, and stretching can actually release stress that's pent up in the body. Oh. And if you find that you don't sleep well, if you stretch before you go to sleep at night, you'll sleep better. It, it actually releases oh. that built up stress that gets stored in the muscles. Okay. And, and you'll find that you'll, you'll get better deep sleep. I at night. Start doing that. I did not so, know that. You know, and there are some simple like seven minute stretching videos that you can find on YouTube. Oh, you know, and yeah. it's really easy, you know, and like I said, and it doesn't take a long time. Okay. But, you know, just doing that on a, a regular continual basis, you will find that you will release that pent up stored stress because a lot of people don't realize that our body physically stores stress. It's stored in your muscles and Which in the other tissues of your body. Yeah. You know, because you, know, you can think, you know, you've been stressed, you get real tense and then you get a backache and then you know, your neck hurts, you get headaches yeah. because you're storing that stress. Right. Uh, 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 TMJ. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. So, and, but also with that, you know, I'm going to teach you how to recognize and overcome the spiritual things that are holding you back as well. This is so key. This is um, so key. Like week number two is going to be all about recognizing certain triggers, yes. how to overcome emotional eating, yes. um, food as idolatry, spirit of gluttony, all of this kind of stuff. We are, I mean, we're going to dig down in there. We're going to go for it, girl. And yeah. this is stuff that, um, and it's like I've said before, this is stuff that carnal minded Christians will be offended over. If you are not renewed to the word of God, right. you're probably going to be offended. And yeah. this may not be the challenge for you because I don't, I don't sugarcoat things. And the, the, I'm going to tell you the truth because it's the truth that sets you free. It is. It is. Because these are truths that I had to come to terms with. You know, I had to come to terms with, I had chosen food as an idol over God. Mm -hmm. I had to come to terms with that. I had a gluttonous spirit that was causing me to eat more food than I needed. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I've also learned how to overcome these things. Yeah. And now the Lord is teaching me how to lead captives, how to lead the captives out of captivity. That's what this is about. I love it. I, I just 100% love it. I, I also, I, I have to say, what you touched on there, the spirit of, you know, the spirit of gluttony. I don't think anybody really likes to be able to look themselves in the mirror and look at their additional weight gain and go, I have to admit, I am indulging a spirit of gluttony. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in our society, it's just not a nice word. It's not. It's not. But I mean, sometimes you can't just dwell on what's nice. If you don't recognize the truth, um, it, it, you can't be set free. I mean, right. an addict has to look at themselves in the mirror and say, I am indulging an addictive spirit. I am 
indulging a demonic stronghold of addiction. Until we confront yes. that, we cannot be set free from it. Until we acknowledge it, we can't, until All we right. can say before Christ, I am a sinner in need of your grace, we can't be in salvation. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. I think the other key element that, and I, I'm sure I'm I'm going to be unpopular with this, but I'm going to say it. The church has enabled and empowered this. Yes. With our social gatherings. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. First. Everything revolves around food. Yeah. Yeah. And Everything now, revolves yes, around food. Healthy food. And most Christians don't want to show up if there's not food. <laughs> you know you know and unless again unless you have renewed your mind to the word of god you can't get a group of people to show up for a prayer meeting unless there's food mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and you know and we have to take a look at that and say you know what is wrong with this picture that our life now revolves around food right and why that's not the way that it's supposed to be and it's not the fruit and veggie platters that are the most popular and the thing is is we can have food at our gatherings but let's consider what we're bringing let's yes. consider the things that are just i mean why not go to the farmer's market and bring all that delicious whole grain bread and and um you know homegrown um you know broccolis and cauliflowers and I mean, tomatoes that taste like, you know, apples, you know, it just yeah. help people discover the deliciousness and yeah. satisfaction of authentic food. Real food. Yes. Yeah. Not the stuff that's been genetically modified, not the stuff that's been sprayed with all the pesticides and chemicals mm -hmm. and, you know, grown and ground that has no nutrition in it anymore. Right. Because that's what really makes the food taste good. It mm -hmm. has to contain the vitamins and the minerals and the enzymes and everything that our body needs. That is what makes the food satisfying yes. to us. It's not the fact that it has tons of salt. It's not the fact that it has heaps of sugar. Yes. Our body wants the vitamins and the minerals and the enzymes that come from these all natural healthy foods. Yes. And that's one of the reasons that we can eat, 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 and still have cravings because we're not getting what our body needs. We're all dying of, many of us, too many of us are dying of malnutrition. And malnutrition does not are. mean you are anorexic and, and, and a twig. Malnutrition means you could be 100, 200 pounds over your health your healthy level, you, but you're still dying of malnutrition. Yeah. yeah, because you don't have enough calcium, you don't have enough potassium, you don't have enough magnesium, you don't have enough vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K, all of these things. You know, you're getting calories, but they're empty calories that they don't contain the nutrition that our body needs to survive. Right. You know, these are the building blocks Right. of our cells and when our cells don't have what it needs mm -hmm. to be able to rebuild and repair then it starts to cause degeneration and disease right right yeah. right right yes yes i mean um boy this is so so good i mean how cool would it be to have a potluck at church where everybody brings like something from an organic garden or a, you know, a, a farmer's mm -hmm. market. And I mean, because I, I tell you what, when I, um, I, what, I, there's two times I can remember, three times I can remember being blown away by the taste of a homegrown tomato where mm -hmm. I, I was like, I have never tasted a tomato. This doesn't even taste like what I know of a tomato tasting like. This is, 
I it was and I and I couldn't get enough of that. that. And then strawberries. Yeah. I was just oh my goodness. Um and then um uh, uh, uh broccoli uh that I had never tasted mm -hmm. like that before and how filling it was. I was I was yeah. You know, um, we, the thing is, is about going to a healthy lifestyle is you are not depriving yourself, are you? You are not cheating no. yourself of anything. Talk no. about awakening to that. Yeah, because that is another one of the lies that the enemy will tell you is that, oh, you have to give up everything that you're going to love. And while, yes, there are some things that you're going to give up, but the, the truth about that is, is that you can actually find things to replace those. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find things that are sweet and that taste sweet, that mm -hmm. will satisfy that sweet craving without all of the sugar and without all of the, um, the other nasty chemicals and things that's going to be in there. Um, and you know, it's like you said, all of the food that you'll be consuming is going to taste better. Yes. You because, you know, especially if you're choosing the stuff that comes from the farmer's markets and things that are grown organically. Um, yes, they may cost a little more up front, but there's, a, there's an old saying going around that you can either pay the farm up front or you'll pay the pharmacy later. Yeah, I love that. That is because. So if you're not giving your body what it needs, then you're going to pay for it later. And it doesn't matter how many times we lay hands on ourselves. It doesn't matter how many prayer lines we go through. Right. If you're not properly feeding your body, it will deteriorate and it will die. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Even, even Jesus ate. He slept. He yeah. got away. He drank water. He did all the things that he needed to do to take care of the physical body. He wasn't just a spirit being floating out in the oasis. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times is there, you know, Jesus got away by himself. He had to go take some time to, to rest and get away from the ministry and the things that were going on. And there right. were times that it mentioned that, you know, everybody else was up worrying about stuff, but Jesus was sleeping. Yeah. And it wasn't just the fact that he wasn't concerned about that stuff. He knew he needed to sleep. Yes. Yes. And he knew that he would not be effective in his ministry and doing the things he needed to do if he didn't properly take care of his body. That's right. You know, I just thought about this too. Um, so it's real easy to look at the extremes, the extremely overweight or the extremely underweight when we're talking about mm -hmm. health and nutrition you yes. know the person battling anorexia the person battling obesity it's easy to go to those extremes but what about the person who you know they may look like they're at a fit level but they're really not um they're um and i'm thinking about again going to the nutrition going to mm -hmm. um the different what are some different um I, for lack of a better word illnesses or afflictions that people can have directly related to improper nutrition improper hydration well one of the first ones is going to be uh, diabetes or pre-diabetes okay and you will see people that are diabetic that are thin not everybody who's diabetic is overweight this is true um, and a lot of what happens is, you know, some people, the pounds pack on on the outside. And then for other people, you get what's called visceral fat. Ooh. And that packs in around your organs. Oh, dear. Instead of on an outside layer in your body. That's and there have been, um, there was a famous runner that thought that he was so healthy, you know, but he didn't eat well, but he ran all the time and he was very super thin, but he died of a massive heart attack. And they found out that not only did he have plaquing in his arteries, but he had a lot of visceral fat. He didn't have any fat on the outside, but it was on the inside where you couldn't really see it. And, um, and that's like fat that gets around your liver, fat that gets around your heart and around the other organs of your body. Oh and, um, 
Yeah. And it can be very deceiving because people think that they're thin, so they think they're okay. Yeah. But um, these people, um, you know, like I said, placking of the arteries. Whoa. You can be very thin and kind of healthy looking, but then you can go have a coronary artery scan done. And it'll say, oh, your arteries are almost completely blocked. Oh, you know, gosh. and that's from improper nutrition. Um, high blood pressure can be um, some of the different um, gastric disorders. Um, GERD can be one that's caused by a lack of nutrition. Okay. Um, and then also, um, of course, we know like celiac disease is caused by gluten exposure because we're eating genetically modified wheat. Ah, uh, okay. And that's one of the main drivers they're finding of celiac disease is they changed the structure of this wheat. Oh, it's no. not what God created. You know, most 90% of the wheat that we eat has been genetically modified. It is not the same wheat that the Lord created. It doesn't even look the same. Wow. If you pull up a picture of what ancient wheat used to look like and what the new wheat looks like, they've made it produce more. So the heads have a lot more wheat grains per head. They're a lot shorter. And uh, the protein molecules are much harder to digest. Oh, wow. And that's why so many more people are coming up with a celiac disease because our body doesn't recognize it anymore. It doesn't know how to handle it. It doesn't know how to properly process it and break it down. Wow. wow. And the same thing is happening with a lot of other genetically modified foods. Wow. So, you know, that's another one of those things, you know, that the enemy's told us, oh, you can go, you can modify this and you can make it better. Now, again, that's man's ego or what a pride, you know, thinking that they can do something better than what the Lord has already given us. No, that's pride, that's ego, and it's stupidity. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, yeah. they thought, oh, we're ending the hunger crisis. You know, we're going to end the hunger crisis doing this. You might think you're ending the hunger crisis, but you're causing sickness and disease yeah. in people. Yeah, because you can't mess with what God gave us for food. No, 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 no. Uh, it's, it was made it's heartbreaking, really. It is. It to is. sit and watch as people struggle and they go through this because they don't know. And uh, you know, they think, oh, it's just, it's just old age. It's just, you know, sickness and disease is a part of life. Or, you know, we're just going to have to suffer until the Lord comes back for us. And, you know, that's not the way that this was intended. No, 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 absolutely 100% not. Um, you know, yes, we have, we have consequences of living in a fallen world, but we mm -hmm. don't have to help the process along. No. <laughs> no. There, there are responsibilities that God gave us, and no one can do it for us. Right. In it, there are, he's given us the tools to be our own hero. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. So let's uh, review a little bit about the challenge. What would you say is going to be the number one benefit of joining this challenge? Um, the number one benefit is just going to be being able to follow somebody who's already done it. You don't have to figure it out on your own. There is a step-by-step -step plan and process that's going to be laid out for you. Um, and all you have to do is follow the plan. Just follow the plan as it's laid out in front of you. If you have trouble, if you stumble, then reach out for help. Reach out for support. Um, you know, and I will always be there if somebody is struggling on the plan, if something's not working for them, um, I will be there as that resource for them that maybe I need to tweak and modify it a little bit for that particular person. You know, oh. if somebody has, you know, special dietary restrictions, you know, say maybe somebody can't do dairy or right. somebody can't eat this particular food or that particular food, you know, we can always tweak the plan a little bit sure. for that particular person. So sure. um, even though it is a structured plan, you know, we can still always make 
adjustments for people as needed. Some people may need to eat more food. Some people may eat, need to eat less food. So as we're going through the process, again, if something's not working, you have somebody you can reach out to. I love that. Because you're not alone. I love that. I would say to me, when I'm looking at it, that's probably one of the biggest um, assets to being part of this challenge is that you're not alone. You have the strength of a community to yes. support you, to cheerlead for you, to intercede for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, what's one more benefit? Um, again, the, the other benefit is going to be um, the spiritual aspects of this about being able to truly identify the areas that you're struggling in and then knowing how to come against that. Yes. Um, identifying your triggers, identifying the things that are holding you back and then not only identifying but then what do I do about it? How do I overcome that thing? Yes. Because, you know, I can teach people how to eat all day long, but if we don't deal with the underlying spiritual issues, Yes. or emotional traumas and things that, that have happened to people. Yes. Those triggers are still always going to be there. And it can be something that can cause you to stumble. It can be something that can trip you up or, or cause you to want to give up. Right. Um, nine times out of 10, it's not the food or the exercise or anything like that that causes people to give up on a program of nutrition and health and changing their lifestyle. It's, it's what's up here and it's the things that they carry. And like I said, a lot of times it can be emotional trauma from your past, mm -hmm. but if you don't know how to recognize it and then what to do about it, it's right. going to continue to haunt you. That's right. That's so. right. I would say that for me personally, it was, um, I, I knew that it was it was connected to uh, pain and trauma from my past, but I couldn't quite figure out mm -hmm. it, what the uh, I couldn't quite identify what exactly it was because there was a lot of things to choose yeah. from. But there's for me, and I would imagine yeah. for most people, there's just one particular little hook. And that as soon as that hook is identified and blown out of you, yeah. the power of God, you are yep. free. It's kind of like that foundation piece. You know, like if you're playing Jenga, uh huh. you know, and you pull yes. out that one piece and the whole tower falls. Yes. That's kind of what it's like, you know, spiritually, yes. you're finding that one piece that's yes. holding that tower together. Yes. And when you remove that piece, then the enemy's tower falls it just it can't collapses. stand against you anymore yep it's like the walls of jericho it's gone yeah yeah and again yes. that gone. is another key element that i see as being uh a reason to join this challenge because um it, it's mm -hmm. an element that just gets left out in in in, in almost every uh, yes. weight loss program this element and because bless you church i love you with all my heart i am part of you but there is so many within the body of christ that are in denial over this over this over this situation and we are becoming participants in others destruction by not in our own destruction exactly Yes, yes. And there was, there is actually a verse of the Bible that I have come across and I had never realized it before. And I meant to have it pulled up, but I'll have to go back and put the actual verse in there. But I know what it says. Mm -hmm. It says, those who destroy my temple, I will destroy them. Wow. I was just kind of paraphrasing it. Uh, for what it's that he was talking about the physical body yes he was not talking about the temple that's in jerusalem wow. this was after all of that 
that whoever destroys this temple, I will destroy. And it's not so much saying that God comes and squashes you, but it's basically saying that if you're going to destroy yourself, then he's going to allow it. Right. Right. I, he's not going to come and rescue us from that because we're doing it. And yes, you can pray. You can repent. You can pray. You can get forgiveness of these things, but I can't tell you how many times I would go through a prayer line. I would have someone pray for me. I would get some relief and some healing, but I could never keep it because I wasn't doing the things that I needed to do to take care of this body. Yes. Yes. And I had to come to terms with that. I had to come to terms that I was doing this to myself. It wasn't Satan. You know, you can scream at Satan all you want to all day long. But if you're not doing the things you need to do, then you are a willing participant in your own destruction. You are causing it. Yes. And the key is there is freedom for you. There is freedom. Oh my gosh. There is so much freedom. Yes. But you have to first know. Right. You have to know the truth. Yes. And then knowing and accepting that truth will make you free. That is what frees you from the bondage that is you know you have to hear the truth first and when there's so many people that you know I can't even imagine how much hate I may even get on this broadcast from people in the comments because a lot of people can't accept it and they won't accept it because they don't have ears to hear right they don't want to hear the truth they want somebody to sugarcoat everything and they want somebody to say oh everything's the devil's fault Mm-hmm. Sorry, everything is not necessarily the devil's fault. We do a lot of this stuff on our own. Right. We become, you know, we, we, we become, well, and the thing is, is it's, it's in a, in a way, it's just sort of, if we look at it in an opposite perspective and we go, you know, God is honoring us with becoming participants in our victory. Amen. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. We can exactly. Either- we can either choose to become participants in our destruction or we can choose to become participants in our victory. Amen. Right. 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 And, and, and not only do we could become participants, but he gives us the most glorious weapons for our warfare mm-hmm. and giving up fast food does not mean you're losing something you are actually gaining real food one of the things that i've experienced in my is i haven't lost anything but unwanted pounds and high blood that's right and discomfort yes i have probably some pain and inflammation pain and inflammation i've lost that um I've, uh, you know, I, I, everything I've lost is, is garbage anyway. Everything I've gained is energy, um, less pain, Mm -hmm. um, uh, just, you know, well, I mean, I could, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, um, well, emotional baggage um yeah. spiritual baggage <laughs> i mean and and the discovery yeah. of real food right real enjoyment of a meal yeah. um exactly yeah yeah um the, it's just a big big ugly lie that to go on a health and nutrition program is to give up and lose and be grumpy and sad and deprived. Yeah. Yeah. Because one thing that, uh, another thing that I want to share yes, is when you're doing this with right motives, Ooh. there is a grace that comes with it. Because again, as Christian women, we're not doing this to look sexy. Mm-hmm. Even though that may be a, a good, you know, side mm-hmm. effect, you know, or benefit, you know, yeah. that we can be more attractive for our mate. Uh-huh. But our main goal and mission is to honor this body. 
That's right. As the temple of the Holy Spirit to bring honor to the Lord. That's and right. To do the things that we need to do. And when you come at it from that perspective, there is a supernatural grace that comes upon you. Yes. To do this. Yes. You're not doing it in your own strength. No. Because the Lord says, there's my daughter. Look at her honor me. Yes. There's some extra grace for you. That's right. Look, look, look at her. Look at her. He's telling the angels, look at, look at her. Look at my precious daughter. What she, look at what she's doing. And she's yeah. honoring me. That's Here's right. some extra grace for you, girl. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is right. That is right. Yeah. And you know, the other thing that I can remember feeling, and this was just a few short months ago. I mean, we're talking like March. Mm -hmm. um, I was feeling so defeated, so discouraged. So, um, well, defeated and discouraged is really yeah. the, the best way. Um, and, and, and then on top of that, feeling uncomfortable, um, feeling pain, all these things. And the, the minute I got that breakthrough from mm -hmm. the Lord, that deliverance from the Lord, that one word that set me free, I felt like an overcomer because I was. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was walking in the truth of my victory. Yes. So that in and of itself, why walk around feeling defeated? Yes. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Because we are already more than over more than conquerors. We are overcomers. That's right. But we have to step into that role. We yes. have to know who we are and yes. who we belong to. And then yes. we have to step into that role. We have to put on that identity and that armor. And then we have to go forward and take it because nobody's going to give it to us. That's we right. have to take it. The that's kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent go and take it by force. That's right. And that's what that's right. we have to do. You know, as daughters of the most high God, we are kingdoms or citizens of his kingdom. Yes. We don't belong to this earth down here. That's we belong right. to him. We are citizens of his kingdom and we have to learn how to operate in those kingdom principles. And one of those kingdom principles is honoring this body. Amen. And we have a comment here from Darla. She's been listening. Hey, Darla. I just want to take a minute and say hey to you. And um, she said, so interested in more details. Um, and she says, I so need this community you're talking about for health and spiritual. So, amen, Darla. Amen. So the, she would just click that link. Click that link. It's an application that you fill out. And then at the end of that application, there will be a link to book a discovery session. And then we'll do a discovery session. I like to do them on Zoom uh, so we can see each other face to face. Um, I pray over each of these discovery sessions. And a lot of times people get breakthroughs just from these sessions. I'm one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm I mean, I, I pray and the Holy Spirit will pinpoint nine times out of 10, what is going on with that person during that discovery session and how I can help them individually. So when I call this a discovery session, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. We are discovering yes. what is at the root, what's going on. So, um, you know, I will get that application. And then if you'll book that discovery session, that'll get you on my calendar and, and we'll move forward from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Such good stuff. Such good stuff. So uh, before we close, one last thought. What do you want to share? Um, again, the main thing that I feel like the Lord is saying, especially in these last days, is yes. we have to be ready. Yeah. We need to be a church that is healthy and physically prepared to do what's going to need to be done in these coming days. There is revival coming. There is going to be an outpouring of his glory that we have never seen, that this <laughs> earth is not really even prepared and ready for. But we have to be ready, not just spiritually. We are going to have to be ready physically yes. because our sick bodies are not going to be able to handle the glory of God. 
Mm. Somebody who is severely sick and ill may not be able to handle the glory of God. And they are going to be passed by. And I believe that comes back to like um, the 10 virgins. Five were ready, five were not. So it's like there's going to be issues with the body of Christ. Some are going to be prepared and some are not. And the ones that are not are going to are going to cry out and say, but Lord, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've done this, I've done that. But he's going to say, I'm sorry, you didn't take care of your body. It's you can't handle the glory. Because mm-hmm. if you go back in the Old Testament and you read about that kabod, that glory of God, it was heavy, it was weighty. And, you know, most people could barely even stand in the presence. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when that comes back, I mean, and they were healthy back then. Right. You know, they, most of the times they were getting good food. They had proper nutrition. Oh, gosh, you know, yes. Um, they were very well fit. You know, I mean, I yeah. mean just think about the lifestyle they had to leave. I mean, they walked everywhere. They, mm-hmm. they the, everything that they did involved weight lifting and aerobic exercise. Yes. You know, just naturally, just, just to live. You know, yeah. they had to carry things everywhere. They had to load things everywhere. Yeah. It, it just was the life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I was listening to, um, I was listening to this archaeologist talk about life in ancient Egypt, and he was saying that they consumed around 2,600 calories a day. Yeah. Between 26 and 3,000 calories a day, but they needed to because yeah. of the lifestyle they lived. Mm-hmm. Because they were out moving, they were lifting, they were pulling things. And, you know, what they did, they needed that much. But in our lifestyle today, we're so sedentary. We drive everywhere. And, you know, we don't burn that much anymore unless you're an athlete or, you know, somebody that just exercises right ridiculous amount. <laughs> or you know me as the dialysis technician walking seven miles a day yeah, you know? yeah. I needed more calories at that point in time in my life but now right. that I'm not as active I don't need as much or I need to increase my activity right you know it's kind of a, a weight right. imbalance and it's not always all about creating a calorie deficit mm-hmm. but that can play a part yeah. of the equation as well so Right. Um, Just learning, learning what your body requirements are, yes. you know, and based on your activity level mm-hmm. and your, just your basic nutritional needs. Like, you know, some yeah. people need more carbs, some people need more protein, right? Yes. You know, everybody's body tends to need a little something different. Yes. Well, but, um, and that, and, you know, I know that was one of the things the Lord challenged me with a year ago was just, just get out and walk every day, honey. <laughs> you're, yeah. sitting, you're sitting on that fanny of yours way too much, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and honestly, we all need some activity, right? We need yes. it. Because otherwise we just don't get our blood circulating. And mm-hmm. no, and we were created to move. Yeah. And, you know, when we sit too much, we get stiff, we get sore, you know, our muscles contract. Right. So we need to get up, we need to move, we need to stretch, you know, get the muscle fibers elongated and, you know, stretch out the tendons and the ligaments and the fascia and, you know, all of the different parts of our body. Because when you're just sitting all day, everything contracts and constricts. And then that's a lot of times where a lot of the pain starts. Because everything is contracted so much. Because I know for me personally, when I sit at a desk all day long, Mm -hmm. I hurt. My back hurts, my legs hurt, my hips hurt, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I have even transitioned from a sitting desk to a standing desk. I'm standing behind a desk right now. Oh, there you go. You all probably see me moving around a lot, but (laughs) I don't sit sit all day anymore. I stand. Yes. I may sit for a little while, but for the most part, I stand. And yeah, my feet will get a little sore here and there, but not to the point of the way my back was hurting, the way my hips were hurting and all that type of stuff because I was sitting too much. 
Right. And I've known that about myself for years. Yeah. And um, oh, hold on. Somebody is trying to call me here. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a way to interrupt the Zoom call. Isn't it? <laughs> I got to put the phone on Do Not Disturb. But. Oh, that's funny. Oh, this is so, so good. And I just, I, I love, I feel the passion you have for this ministry and for this, um, for this challenge. And, um, I just, I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and in many ways I share it with you just cause I've, I mean, I've known the struggle and I've known, and I, and I'm, and I'm experiencing the victory. Yes. And, um, it, 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 it uh, I just, I, people give give christy a call and um and just have a sit down with her and and discuss what might be right for you um and uh here's here's a challenge i would lay out to everyone out there just get out and take a walk around the block mm -hmm. take a walk around the block if you're if you're if you're not mobile do some arm lifts you know, do something to yes. be active. Start there. Start there. Yes. Yeah. Do what you can do. You do your natural. Let the Lord put the supernatural on there and let's combine the two together. That's right. That's we right. have to do our part and then he'll come in and do his part. And then that's where the victory comes in. That's right. And again, don't let regret or shame or feeling fear or fear get in your way no you are too important yes you are we important. all have a purpose and we all have a calling and a destiny we are a piece of a puzzle and without you the puzzle is not complete that is without right. me the puzzle is not complete without donna the puzzle is not complete we all have something that we were meant to do that's right. And again, the enemy is taking out too many of us too early, you know, due to poor health. That is right. That is right. That is right. Okay, guys. So this is it for our expert interview. Thank you so much, Christy. I, I love talking with you. I love talking with you. And uh, please contact her if you have any questions at all. Please contact Christy. You can be found at the link... <laughs> Yep. That uh, the link that's in the comments is for the challenge. That is to anybody that's interested in the challenge. Now, the first challenge is for women, um, but subsequent challenges, I will have one for women, one for men. So oh, I'm not forgetting about the gentlemen. Um, great. I'm going to take care of the, of the ladies first. I'm more experienced working with women. So I believe I can smooth that one out faster, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, actually work on perfecting some okay. of my content and things like that and then in subsequent challenges i'll run one for women and one for men oh very cool very very so there'll cool. be separate communities and different things going on women will have their own community men will have their own community um, and then, you know they can go through the content at the same time so you'll have the same content but they'll have separate communities right and, on and things like that very very cool and then your ministry is kingdom health builders and your yes. web, your web, ah, your web address is kingdomhealthbuilders.com. Perfect. And then you're also on Facebook. Yes. Same name, Kingdom Health Builders. And there is a closed Facebook community um, that I do um, weekly lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a live every Monday where I am teaching something um, that the Lord has given me and some weeks it's something spiritual, some weeks it's something physical or natural. So it's just, again, it's kind of a combination of the supernatural and the natural, you know, but I believe when we combine the two, we get divine health. That's right. That's right. And if you're watching on the recast, please do um, put your comments in because we will be, you know, uh, replying back to you on those comments we will be seeing them and we'll be able to comment back. Also, you never know what you share, how that's going to maybe free somebody else. Exactly. So please do leave your comments, uh, share this video, like this yeah. video, and we will see you again here at Breathe Life Ministries. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you again, Christy. You're welcome. And thank you again for having me on.
You are very welcome. Okay.